All right, so this is the first one. How about the second case, which is basically also female, also young, but the main problem in the skin, so I'm talking about scleroderma. And this is skin kind of problem usually due to the collagen, so the collagen will be positive, so the second topic will be scleroderma. And also we'll make it like the first one. And, and the interesting things here, guys, there is no treatment in general, so the treatment will be supportive. But in scleroderma, first you need to know whether it is diffuse or localized. So and it's 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 very easy. I mean, there are really big table. I I don't feel comfortable to walk with this big table of differential between. Yeah, I don't know whether this is important differential between localized or diffuse. I think maybe this is too much, but I will just highlight the most important. For you guys, you know, the localized, I, I will talk about, or we will talk about crest. And you know crest, right? Which is calcinosis, rhinosis, visual dysmotility, sclerodactyly, telangiectasis. So that's it. Crest. For, for this one, we are talking about diffuse. What you will have as diffuse, guys, features. You will get peripheral edema. So patient, basically, the hands will swallow, the legs will swallow, sorry, the feet will swallow. So here, basically, Peripheral edema is a kind of interesting. Renal failure here more common than than the first one, which is sorry, this is renal failure. And the third thing, usually interstitial lung disease is more common. So lung involvement here is common. Now, now let's make the lung in the middle. Sorry, yeah, this is not neat. This is the renal, and let's make the lung in the middle here. Lung problem, usually you have two differential. The patient will come with shortness of breath on exertion of one year or a year. I mean a chronic. Now you have two differential. If you are talking about diffuse, your answer will be interstitial lung disease. Now, how about Allen? If I'm talking about lung problem in localized, which is basically CRES, what is the lung pathology or problem in localized scleroderma? Yes, Alan, you here? Where is he? Oh, he got this one. It's interesting. Oh, I think Michael tried to fix the computer and he also got this one. Yes, Alan? Sorry, I lost connection. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, no problem. I asked the question for you. Localized, localized scleroderma lung feature. What is the lung feature in localized scleroderma? No? Okay, guys, this is pulmonary hypertension. So, pulmonary hypertension more common with localized, while interstitial lung disease more common with diffuse. So this is important, guys, because it's different. What else important? Maybe you can say... No, I don't think you need... Yeah, I think that's it. Now, when I'm talking about diffuse, basically here you'll see other systems involvement, which is the major big systems. We talked about the lung. Maybe cardiovascular system is here also important. So cardio cardiovascular disease like congestive heart failure or cardiac disease like congestive or arrhythmias it's not a big deal GI and the GI question usually patient have let's say patient have just a vitamin B12 deficiency what is the GI pathology in sacroderma patient that is presented as vitamin B12 deficiency guys very good. So basically, oh. here because of because of decrease in you know in motility, so basically you will get bacterial overgrowth. All right, and because of bacterial overgrowth, vitamin B12 will be deficient. So these are the questions so far for scleroderma, which is interesting. First, you need to know the lung in pulmonary hypertension is very high yield in localized. Second, localized crest, and I think all of you know crest. 
these are for me, these are more common than vitamin B12 and diffuse one. Now, what else important? Serology. For diffuse, the what is the serological marker for diffuse cycloroderma? Rho and La. Anti no. Anti topa isomerase. Anti topo isomerase, which is anti cycloderma 70. Topo isomerase, guys, here. All right. Anti topo isomerase, which is, they call it anti S70, I think. Anti S70 or anti SL70. This is very specific for diffuse. And the very specific for localized, I think you know this one, anti-centromere. All right? So you get anti-centromere here, and you get anti-topoisomerase there. Now, the diffuse I talked about, the GI, I talked about cardiac, I didn't talk about the most important, which is basically renal and renal crisis. And the treatment for renal crisis, you remember one time I talked about ACE inhibitors, renal crisis. A crest... The second one is R, although here also, guys, there is Raynaud. So Raynaud, I will make it in the middle because Raynaud could be present as localized, could be present as diffuse. The treatment for Raynaud is you will give the patient calcium channel blockers or just avoid cold exposure and this stuff. So that's it, I think. I don't think you have a lot in cycloderma. Crisis question, cycloderma is important, you know that. Uh, Pulmonary hypertension is important and the crest in general and and I think that's it about cycloderma. Now I'll make here special notes, Raynaud differential diagnosis. How you will divide it? Either primary Raynaud, which is the idiopathic one. I mean, there is no disorders. And this is usually patient young and mild on cold exposure and no other symptoms. It's usually mild. And no other symptoms you can see. I mean, no other, no other uh, systems. Or you will see secondary. And when you are talking about secondary guys, you will divide into subcategories to make it easier. Maybe the patient take drugs. And these drugs, usually beta blockers or tryptan drugs, right? Yesterday we talked about, or maybe niacin. So I think the most important is beta blocker. Second, maybe the patient have have deposition of collagen or depo or problem in an autoimmune pathology. So basically, you can say autoimmune cause like SLE. We just talk about that and cycloderma. Although I didn't talk about cycloderma SLE. Eh, sorry, cycloderma Raynaud's. Sorry, SLE Raynaud's. But this is the time. Cycloderma or SLE. This is autoimmune. And third, you have another one, which is basically due to the vasculitis pathology, and the disease will be Berger's, which is thrombongitis obliterans, or what they will call it. So here you will get Berger disease. So you have three differential diagnoses. I don't think this is high yield topic, it's just, just not. I will even not highlight it. But again, I'll go back to cycloderma. Make sure, guys, you know serology. You know, lung features, and let's move with the third one and the last one. Yeah, just the three con major connective tissues. You will get all of them. Now, let's give you a third one as a case, which is basically a 27-year-old female patient, you know, it's female, and you know, this is dry eye and dry mouth, which is very easy. Second thing, guys, whenever you will see this is dry eye and dry mouth, what you will do next? What you need to know, if you feel this dry eye and dry mouth, so basically you are talking about Sjogren, Sjogren, sorry. So, what do you think you need to know if it is... Chagrin. Anybody? You ask about the history if there is any joint thing. Why? So the chain of raw and la. 
No, no. Why? Why you need to ask if there is joint pain or not? This is a good answer. Safe. Why? Because it's. Uh, I think it's one of the the part of the show glands. It's. For the criteria of show as I remember, I don't know. It's usually. I think he's he's right, but it's not. I don't think this is a criteria. Is it because it's an autoimmune disease, and if you have one autoimmune disease, you're highly likely to have another autoimmune disease, such as, you know, rheumatoid arthritis or you know, SLE or polymyositis or something like that? Right, so basically she is talking about secondary, which is, that's why it's rheumatoid arthritis or SLE, and those patients, they will have these problems, while in secondary, I don't think they will have joint. So in a primary, there is no joint problem. In secondary, you will see joint problem. Because you are talking about uh, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, and maybe scleroderma here. So the second thing, guys, once you are talking about Sjogren, you need to know whether it's a primary or secondary Sjogren's. Because I think you need just to know primary or secondary, just maybe pathological point. I don't think different in, in a treatment. Usually there is no big treatment for Sjogren's. Oh, no, I think... Yeah, I think I think it's important, by the way, because if it is a primary, the treatment will be just supportive. So this is supportive treatment, while for the secondary, you have to treat treat it like like what? You will treat it like connective tissue disease. So you'll treat it like SLE, sacroderma, rheumatoid. So you'll treat it like connective tissue disease. That's why it's important. Yes, yeah, sorry, it's important. Yeah. Then, this is the first question. Second question of Sjogren, the mo uh, serology, most of you know ANA and NTLA, NTRA. We just talk about this serology, so it is, it's, it's easy, ANA and NTRO, NTLA. We talked about NTRO, which is basically congenital, neonatal, congenital, this is SSA and this is SSB. And we talk about that, which is neonatal lupus. So now, after 10 years or 30 years, this patient comes to you with maybe parotid swelling. This, let's say 10 years, and now this patient has parotid swelling. What are you going to do? Hey, hello, this important question is here. Biopsy the right. And you will do biopsy to exclude. Biopsy. Right, and do biopsy to exclude well. To make sure this is not what why will do by right so malignancy and the malignancy here which is here is the most common cause of death by the way which is malignancy which is not hodgkin's or not this non-hodgkin's lymphoma non-hodgkin's lymphoma is the most common cause of death in Sjogren disease now when i talk about supportive treatment that means something artificial for the eye something for the joint so basically, maybe you can say for I, usually you have two drugs. The first one, pilocarpine. The second one, civilamine, I think, or something. Pilocarpine, I know about the spelling. Second one, I think, civimiline or something, which is basically, I think, these are cholinergic drugs. And when you talk about the joint, basically I'm talking about steroid or maybe non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs as a joint problems. A treatment sure is not important here. The important about Sjogren's is you need to know the serology sure. And I think NTRO is very high yield here. I don't think even a primary or secondary is important for you guys as a high yield. These are just two high yield points for Sjogren's. So that's it. Any question? Doctor, we had a quick question. If you have um, parotid swelling, swelling for children, they say it's bilateral. If it's unilateral, does it indicate that it's uh, more likely to be a malignancy? Oh, you mean oh, you mean the type of parotid swelling if it is bilateral? Yeah, or, it, whether or it's bilateral. unilateral or bilateral. Because I've always been led to believe that if it's unilateral, it's more likely to be cancer. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I can say I don't know. I think it's better. Okay, that's okay. Yeah, I Thank think, you. I think Thank it's you. better to say something. I <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. For me, I think it's, if it is bilateral, this will. I don't know. I don't know. Thank maybe you. Thank you. maybe you are right. Unilateral go with malignancy.
all right guys so ready for the next one okay I think I think I will leave this with one page and they will go to next because the next I got more pages which is rheumatoid uh, osteo gout and then maybe some differential diagnosis about about septic I will not talk about septic here in details but usually these three topics now for the next an hour and guys how we will approach joint problem you will go with also will make big diagrams about approach to the joint pathology so first you will start with this is one joint so arthritis Oops, where is my coffee? Oh. Hmm. No, that's not good. Anyway. So, arthritis, guys, uh, we will divide into mono or poly. So, whether one joint or one, two joints. And two of them, uh, the mono, the most important thing about the mono arthritis, guys, you will do with uh, synovial fluid aspiration. So you will do synovial aspiration. And for synovial aspiration, you have, I think, one or two important. The first one, if you will see, which is basically you will look for white blood cells. If you will see white blood cells between 5 to 20 or more than okay wait a second let me remember the numbers it's it's 5 to 20 20 to 50 I guess wait a second because these are I don't I don't know but these are kind of interesting to know I don't know where I wrote it forget it let's Just some five is normal. I know five, yeah, less than five is normal, and... Less than five, uh, 50,000 is septic, and two, 20,000 is uh, infectious arthritis. Okay, give me one Whatever second. Whatever I remember. Wait a second, yeah, thank you, but give me one second, let me, let me make sure about that. Give me one second, guys. See, I wrote it somewhere. Yeah, guys, less than five. Basically, less than it's not five. Yeah, up to two thousand is normal. So you will see up to two is normal. Uh, up to fifty or more than fifty. More than fifty your answer will be septic arthritis and I think makes sense so basically this is septic arthritis less than 50 your answer will be either gout or pseudogout normal just make normal means non-inflammatory okay I mean yeah, usually normal mean non-inflammatory. This could be represent osteoarthritis. Although osteo usually usually walk with poly, but could be represent osteoarthritis. This is the most important things for the normal, or maybe even in you know maybe even in uh, in others inflammatory conditions like SLE, rheumatoid, or maybe you will, you will go with uh, yeah rheumatoid positive differential diagnosis, rheumatoid negative differential diagnosis, which is basically uh, these rheumatoid negative the spondyloarthropathies and rheumatoid positive or maybe even SLE. So you know you will have a lot of things which is basically normal. So that's why the questions will not talk about normal. The questions will be either septic 50 or up to 50. So it's usually 20 or 10 up to 50 is ek is gout more than is uh, is septic make sure guys these are these are confused figures i mean the numbers here are important that's why i spent time to look where i wrote it so gout pseudo gout or septic the interesting things you know all of them they have polymorphonuclear cells when i'm talking about pm 
white blood cells mean polymorphonuclear cells. If you will see inside polymorphonuclear cells, so basically this is your polymorphonuclear cells, inside you will see maybe these gram-positive cocci. So here you have gram-positive cocci. What? What? Inside polymorphonuclear cells. Or maybe you will have this polymorphonuclear cells, right? But what you will see, you will see either positive pyofringes or negative pyofringes, which if it is positive pyofringes, maybe, I don't know how, how I, it's usually yellow or blue, so I don't know really how to draw it, but I just would like to say maybe inside you will see ureate crystal or inside you will see calcium. If it is calcium, your answer will be pseudogal. If it is urate, your answer will be gout. So basically, guys, all of them white blood cells positive. Inside white blood cells, gram-positive cocci, this is septic. Inside white blood cells, calcium, this is pseudogout. Inside white blood cells, urate, this is just gout. Okay, so far? So this is the first approach, which is the mono and very high yield, the mono part, because it's uh, it's really with the white blood cells approach. Now, uh, more with mon mo mono, but usually I like to talk about white blood cells first, which is the low. Hmm. Sorry. I think I have to change that because there is no space. Yeah. Okay, okay, let's make it down. If normally you have these differentials, right? As uh, osteo or rheumatoid. There is another there is another classification for this normal. Either bloody or non bloody. This is easy, but I think it's also interesting. So for the normal, this is two not secondary. This is 2,000 white blood cells. This is 50,000 white blood cells. This is more than 50,000. So this is white blood cells. Gone. If it is a bloody, here you are talking about either trauma or coagulopathy. And I think coagulopathy is important, which is basically heme arthrosis, coagulopathy, right? Heme arthrosis, which is like uh, hemophilia. If it is not a bloody, the major two or three osteoarthritis, I just talk about osteoarthritis, which is the first one. Second one is patient on steroid. You will give me the diagnosis. Patient on steroid and come with joint pain and white blood cells normal. What is this problem? Uh, Radwan, what do you think? Non bloody, monoarticular joint. Patient on steroid, long-term steroid therapy. What would be your answer? I have no idea. Okay. Safe? Again, guys, do you understand the question? So it's not a bloody one joint, but the patient long-term steroid therapy. Are you asking No, I'm asking safe. Vascular necrosis. Right, a vascular necrosis. Okay. Oh. Now, any neuropathic joint, that means DM patient, or there are a lot of causes about neuropathy. A few minutes, I will talk about DM, vitamin B12, deficiency, this is charcoid. So make sure also you know these, because <coughs> I don't think monoarticular present as with rheumatoid factor. These are really rarely presented as mono. So that's why I will delete it. This rarely present as mono, guys. Mo Although it's a present, could be there is monoarticular in, 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 sorry, a rheumatoid. But I think, I think this is another, I think this differential is more accurate or more for at least for you. So when you will see normal divided according to bloody, which is coagulopathy, which is basically only have hemophilia. Or maybe guys, by the way, hemophilia, sorry, maybe guys, just trauma, which is easy. Or non bloody, make sure you know osteo, steroid lung, any patient on steroid lung means, means I'm talking about vascular necrosis. If it is any hip pain, 
and don't forget the differential diagnosis about a vascular necrosis sickle cell disease so sickle cell also cause a vascular necrosis so maybe you can say differential diagnosis of, of a vascular necrosis you have sickle here all right so this is the mono one which is i think more important than the poly because the poly is usually what you need to know about the poly you need to know whether the patient have systemic features positive or negative and what are these systemic features guys you know fatigue weight loss uh, fever maybe weight loss fever maybe esr uh, i mean a lot of systemic features if it is if it is negative your answers will be osteoarthritis because again osteoarthritis could be present as poly if it is positive here you have a bunch of differential means you are talking about inflammatory problem and I'm talking when I'm talking about inflammatory problems in the joint also divide into two types if it is acute or a chronic if it is acute you have two differentials either infection or non infections so basically you can say infection means two things important gonococcal one viral second Lyme third gonococcal viral and Lyme I, I, you know guys it's interesting I didn't talk about septic here because septic usually presented as monoarticular acute inflammatory infections but non-bacterial usually I mean not non-staph you can say this is non-staph arthritis which is gonococcal present as poly viral present as poly Lyme present as poly even rheumatic fever by the way also present as poly right you remember rheumatic fever this usually a migratory polyarthritis so you can say here rheumatic fever and then maybe you have only one interesting but it's non-infection is usually inflammatory which is basically writers writers here also writers who present as acute or subacute for a chronic all of you know the chronic stuff i think we just talk about some of them which is basically they are a bunch of but most of them you can say for a chronic your key point will be autoimmune disease right which is SLE you can put here SLE you can put first rheumatoid arthritis sorry the first one SLE second scleroderma maybe and a lot by the way but these are the big three So make sure for any polyarticular go to the systemic features. If it is positive, your answers will be go after because usually people stuck in the chronic and forget the other one, which is which is very easy, guys. I mean, if he will give you some acute presentation, you don't need to say this is rheumatoid. So your answers for acute usually in your case will be gonococcal, by the way, or viral. These are the most important. Gonococcal or viral. Chronic, he will not give you case to diagnose chronic SLE or even chronic chromatoid. I think it's it will be so obvious, and even I don't think he will give you he will give you a case to diagnose osteoarthritis. Maybe I don't know. Osteoarthritis is important, but I mean it really will be obvious as no systemic features and the patient, you know, patient have long term. I will talk about this one in a few minutes. Okay, so this is your approach for the joint any question before I will talk about details let me clear one thing here for septic what are the causes of septic arthritis guys could be the patient known case of osteoarthritis could be patient known case of rheumatoid arthritis so he's already known case of these osteo or rheumatoid to start with and now at some point he got the septic arthritis please make sure he will this very high yield patient known case of osteoarthritis on a treatment non treatment whatever and then one time he got this fever at limitation the erythema swelling that means he is now septic arthritis and the same questions for rheumatoid arthritis patient is known case of rheumatoid arthritis stable on a treatment at some point of 
sorry, in his life he got septic arthritis. Okay, so make sure you know this.